Um, hi. <laughs> um, it's been a while since I recorded a podcast episode for a podcast unknown. I only uploaded one episode and then I called it a day. But, um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna be talking about. I just kind of feel like talking because that's just how I am. I, I, like, I just like to say words sometimes, even if I don't know what they mean. But as you can tell, probably, is that today's podcast episode is going to be about Rubik's Cubes. So, this definitely sounds like a really nerdy thing for me to say. But, um, Rubik's Cubes have been one of my number one hobbies lately. I uh, also. Um, enjoy guitar a lot, which I'll put a clip of me playing at the end, probably. But, um, yeah, I've been taking on a lot of new hobbies lately, and not gonna lie, it's it's fun, honestly. I used to be someone that was, like, too scared to do something just because I was like, wow, I'm not gonna be good at it. But the thing is, if you think that way, you're never actually going to get good at anything, you know? Like... I gave up on the Rubik's Cube for a very long time. And hold on, I'm gonna stop more over here. And of course I wasn't gonna get good at it because I never even I never practiced it, I never tried it. So I pushed myself to learn and look where I am now. I'm gonna move my mic just a little closer. Yeah, you might see the little setup I have going on here. I'll just remove that. Just cause, yeah, okay. Okay, we're good. Okay. Yeah, it's, oh, sorry. That was probably very loud. But, um, yeah, I've been taking on new hobbies. And it's fun, you know? It's nice to try something new, and when you finally get the hang of it, it's like, It's just so much more rewarding because the feeling of wanting to give up, it feels crappy because no one wants to give up. Even though we say that we're going to give up a lot or we say that, oh, that was really bad. Sorry. Or we say that we just don't aren't motivated anymore. That's that's normal. It's normal to want to give up, but of course it doesn't feel good because you're like, wow, that's something unfinished that I never finished and I want to finish it, you know? And that's exactly how I felt for a lot of things. I, when I first got my Rubik's Cube, ooh, when I first got my first Rubik's Cube, um, I, I went at it for a good few weeks. But I was kind of cheating because I used like the AI app um, on your phone. But then there was it was blocked by a paywall, so I gave up, and I was really frustrated after that because I was on the last step. And I watched a lot of videos, but usually they weren't that helpful, and it always frustrated me because the thing is, back me back then, I never really took the effort to try and understand I always just expected it to be handed to me okay I sorry I'm doing really bad I kind of do bad when I start when I talk but um I used to expect like everything to be handed out to me just like oh solve it like this and then do this but it's like when you are playing with the Rubik's Cube you can't really like this can go for a lot of other things there's a lot of things that you can't just learn without actually trying it yourself you know and some some things you can learn certain steps directly from other people like algorithms and stuff but there's going to be a lot of cases on the rubik's cube that are going to be cases that you have to figure out on your own um, if you're experienced with the, with the Rubik's Cube, you probably know that 
The first step is to create the. Here, let me get my other key. The first step is to create the the white cross or any color cross. But a lot of people start off with white just because it's the easiest color to pick out. So you start off with the white cross. And then you saw first layer and second layer. I'm just going to do it at the same time because this podcast is not about this right now. But yeah, then you saw this, these step, uh, this step right here. And the cross and first two layers are F2L are both something that you have to kind of figure out yourself. You can see how to pair up cases. But sometimes they'll be set up differently and you have to like, you can learn it from other people, but I feel like it's a lot better to learn it, um, to learn it just by trying things out. So when I was first learning how to solve first two layers, I realized that if I had a corner in like this, corner in like this, right? White sticker out facing to the side and then these colors and then its edge is right here um when i noticed something like that i realized that i could just pair it up by taking the edge out and then also taking the corner out just like that and then i can put it in where it has to go and of course that did take a lot of brain power i i had to do a lot of random turns before I actually even understood what was going on and then when you figure things out like that by yourself it helps you to figure other steps out by yourself because they all follow like the same kind of concept and if you learn one concept it's like you're you're set you know you're you're set for many other open doors and it's just i don't know i what i'm trying what i was trying to say is that i always expected someone to guide me through something even though it's something that you can't even really be guided through you can be helped through it but can you be directly guided through it most of the time no well i mean you can but are you gonna learn from it definitely no and if you if you play with the Rubik's Cube, or I mean, if you learn how to solve the Rubik's Cube, but you only know how to solve it like by watching like a video or um, writing certain steps down on a piece of paper or on a note card or something like that. If you learn it like that, yeah, you'll be able to learn it. But it's just, it's better to try to go off of muscle memory rather than trying to just remember strings of letters. I mean, I feel like most of memory actually happens naturally. I'm not gonna lie. Because it's just... Uh, I don't know where to start. Hold on. But yeah, muscle memory is very... Um, muscle memory is very easy because it comes naturally. It's something that you think won't come like muscle memory like i don't know if, if okay if you're let's say you're not a keeper right but you most likely aren't because most people that watch my videos are not keepers but let's say if you are let's say you're not okay um if you're ooh, wait a minute i already messed up Yeah, I didn't mess up. Oh, that sucks. Ew. Okay, sorry. It just looked really good. Okay. Um, so, let's say you're watching someone solve a cube, right? You don't really know what they're doing. And it looks impressive. And that's what makes a lot of people not want to learn how to solve it. Just because it looks like a lot of memorization. Like, it, a lot of people think that Rubik's Cubes are just pure memorization. Or people that are even more annoying think that it's math when it is none of those things i mean actually yeah it is memorization but 
Once you memorize for long enough, it becomes muscle memory. And that's what sets back a lot of people. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't have good memory. And like, that's okay. You can still learn to, s of course, if you don't want to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube, that's fine. You know, I don't, of course, I don't think everyone should know how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Like, I, I just feel like it's something cool to show off a little party, little party trick. But like, um, ooh, what was I just saying? I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, but yeah. Don't let things like that intimidate you. Just because it's really not that hard if you think about it. You know? It's like studying for a test, basically. But more fun and something that you actually might care about a lot more than a test. But, um, yeah, it's like studying for a test. Once you get it burned in your brain you memorize it easier and you can have better recall and when you see a word let's say you're studying for english right you see a word and you're like hey i know that definition or you see a definition like, hey i know that word you know it's like that it's like when i see a certain cake ooh, oops sorry it's like okay here it's like if i see this case this case right here t perm is what cubers call it all right if i see this Hey, I know the algorithm to solve that, and then I can solve it. Or, if I want to do T-perm, hey, I know the algorithm to do the T-perm, and I know it's a T-perm. Or, you can do other algorithms that are easier, so... Usually, this is the one that a lot of beginners learn first, is our U-perms. So, I think this is a... I think this is a U-B-perm. Because I think U-B-perms go... Yeah. Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. So, this is a U perm, right? I see this, and I'm like, hey, I know that algorithm. And then I do it. Or the other way around. Oh, hey, I know I know that algorithm. Or I know that case. And I do it on the cube. And it's just like... It's just studying, you know? Well, not really studying. I wouldn't call it studying. But I would just call it, like, just practicing. Like, doing it... Like, actually doing it compared to just watching people do it is a lot different. Obviously, that... I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But it's just... Just... Don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated by a lot of things, is what I'm saying, actually. This isn't just about Rubik's Cubes. This is about... Just... You know, just... Ooh, that was really bad luck, but... Just be more... Step out of your comfort zone more, you know? I don't know if solving a Rubik's Cube is necessarily stepping out of your comfort zone. But, you know, like, maybe... Maybe you're interested in a sport and... There's already a team application. Or there's already team tryouts. Is what I meant to say. There's already team tryouts coming up. And, you know what? Although, you're someone that gets embarrassed by maybe running on the court and kind of looking like an idiot just go for it you know try it you know because you can you're gonna make a lot of friends you're gonna also become more athletic you know you're gonna be more active and i feel like that's something that i have to get better at um stepping out of my comfort zone because i i find i don't know i find oh i messed up I find a lot of things embarrassing, even though they're not really embarrassing things. Like, I don't know, I... I'm just gonna stop, I'm sorry, I, I just can't. Sorry. I cheated a little bit, we don't care. But like, at my old school, I used to think that running <laughs> during PE class was embarrassing. So I didn't run. And my teacher obviously would always call me out for it because it's freaking PE class. Of course, you're supposed to run, you know. You're supposed to get your blood pumping a little bit before the gym activities actually start. And yeah, and I would, I just, I don't know. I just never, That this also brings in the subject about caring less. Because I feel like, 
a lot of people okay the, there's definitely there's a video called this i think there's a video about this exact thing and they say the exact thing that i'm about to say but it's the spotlight effect literally the feeling that everyone is watching you is just fake it's it's not real no one no one is staring at you no one's looking at you no one even cares about you you know no one, no one cares what you're doing you know it's like because if you think about it when someone is presenting in the class and they're presenting in front of the entire class right and you realize that you you don't really care you don't really care about them stuttering you don't care about them being quiet you don't care about them making errors in their sentences you don't care if their slides are ugly you don't really care about anything because you probably hate school but you just don't you realize you find yourself and you don't care but suddenly when you do it you your body just i want to say activates fights or i want to say activates fight or flight mode but i would say that your body does pump out just a little bit of adrenaline because it's nervous the body is nervous we have an entire nervous system dedicated to being scared, to being nervous, to being defensive. And, of course, that's going to affect how we act and how we feel. But if you just take into consideration that you don't care when other people present, why should you care when you present, you know? Because you know that no one else cares. You know everyone is half asleep, heads are down, you know? It's just like, no one really cares, man. And I feel like it's a, it's easier said than done, obviously, to just care less. Because, obviously, you still do have to care if you're in, like, a professional setting. Like, at your at your job or, um, or in a job interview. But that's different. Because that's when you actually should start caring. <laughs> but, um, it's just, caring too much can really make you miss out on some opportunities, you know? Like... Like, let's say you want to run for student council. And when you do, they tell you that you're going to have to make a speech. You're like, oh, oh I don't want to make a speech, you know? And it's like, when, when you make that speech, of course it's going to feel like everyone is caring about you, you know? Everyone, it makes it feel like that everyone is listening to your every word, listening to every little listening to every little mistake that you make but in reality people are probably just bored <laughs> <sighs> like giving a speech is really um giving us oops i exposed a little bit of skin my fault but giving a speech is um nerve-wracking of course it's it's nerve-wracking um to give a speech especially in front of a lot of people and i understand getting scared you know of course being scared it's it's a normal thing especially for events as big as that um but what can soothe the nerves a little more and help you speak better is um Okay, this is actually some presenting advice now, since I've been ranting about how you should care less. Now I'm going to teach you how to care less, alright? Or how to just be better. Um, so, this advice I got from my mom, actually, um, when you're presenting in front of the class, right? Usually you're going to be presenting in front of the class, so you're going to be standing, but, um, when doing that, instead of making eye contact with random people and then making it really awkward, um, you can just stare at the back of the class. And, like, look around at the back of the class, you know, maybe make eye contact with the teacher. And when you do that, it's going to obviously make it a lot less awkward because... Oh, sorry. Because you're not directly just staring at people. If you're directly staring at people, then it feels awkward. Because it's like you're presenting to a specific person, and that's kind of weird. But, um, when you stare at the back of the classroom, it's just... 
if you just tune out all the people that are there if you just space out you know it's just you start to realize that it's really not that bad you know it's really not that bad which is something that I try to tell myself every day. It's really not that bad, but... Mm -mm -mm. It only feels like it gets worse. But, um... That's another thing. Getting over nerves isn't going to be an easy process. And, of course, you're going to have a lot of embarrassing moments. Just because... That's how life is, you know? It, it sucks. It sucks that we have to live with embarrassment because i don't know sometimes you just do dumb stuff and you end up getting punished for it so but yeah like just care a little less if something embarrassing happens just push it off you know because the chances that other people remember something like that are really low but it kind of does depend what you do um but like, if you stumbled over your words, like, no one's gonna care about that. Like, they'll- they'll forget it in the next... what? In the next, like, one minute, probably? So... Sorry, I was just like, trying to think of what to say. Also, I'm, like, getting sloppier because I'm kind of getting tired. But, yeah, caring less and just stepping out of your comfort zone, you know? There's just a lot of things that we care about that we really shouldn't care about, and it ruins experiences for us. You know? Like, maybe you, I don't know, maybe you're in math class, right? Teacher calls on you randomly, picks out that popsicle stick, and, um, teacher calls on you. You don't know the answer, of course, so you blurt out some random answer, and then everyone laughs at you, or whatever. Everyone thinks you're stupid, like, who cares, man? Because, you know what? The chances that they knew the answer, <laughs> they probably don't. But, just don't feel bad about the little things. Like, yeah, people are gonna laugh. A lot of people are going to laugh at you, and that sucks. I don't like when people laugh at me, but I already know it's gonna happen. Just because kids will be kids. And it's just. Sometimes, sometimes. Okay, just think about this. Let's say, let's say you saw a little kid um, on the street, right? You know, they're, he's just riding his little scooter. You know, he's having a he's having a good time. And suddenly, he trips over a rock and he falls directly on his face. Splat. And see, now you're probably chuckling a little to yourself right now. Or you probably just break out in a laughter if you saw that happen. See? That kid that laughed at, you laughed at that kid. And you know what? It's just bound to happen that people are going to laugh at you. Because if you laugh at other people, they're going to laugh at you too. But sometimes you can't control it. It doesn't matter if you laugh or not at people. Like, people will, people, just in general, people will laugh at you. But you know what? Sometimes it's nice to just embarrass yourself every now and then because i don't know maybe it could have made someone's day you know doing something stupid in front of in front of the class maybe you could have just made someone's day you know maybe you could have gave them another reason to wake up tomorrow depending on what you did maybe if it was really that funny or maybe you give them a reason to want to come to school the next day Give them a reason to laugh. Give them a reason to smile, you know? It's just small moments like that that could really change someone's life. You know, the butterfly effect, you know? Small, small choices. Or wait, what was it? What was it? Hold on, I have to look it up. Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, so... 
a small choice that seems like it doesn't matter can actually make a big effect you can actually affect a lot of things in the long run even if the choice wasn't that bad so it's just like the little little butterfly effect little snowball effect you know and it's just It's just small moments are things that we should all really cherish. Even though sometimes those small moments might be by those stupid class clowns or those kids that are annoying and get on your nerves, but kids do that for a reason, you know? Maybe they're having a hard time at home and they just want to try and get people to laugh. Maybe they just want to get a laugh themselves, you know? And sometimes that might mean they mess with other people but just know that if someone mess with if someone messes with you someone picks on you someone makes fun of you or whatever either they're not happy with themselves and they want to just take it on someone else or since that's a very common thing to say or they're dealing with a situation and it's angering them it's making them angry it's or it's making them sad so they pick on someone to make it you know, go away. Because some people find joy in bullying other people, and that kind of sucks. But bullies, unless you're a villain, like, unless you're, like, actually the meanest person in the entire world, unless you're, like, the Grinch, um, you, people, I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you're a bully, but I'm just saying, like, bullies don't bully because they want to bully. They don't bully because they want to be mean. They don't bully because they want to hurt feelings. They bully because it's either something inside of them or it's something in their environment that is holding them back from being a genuine person, you know? That's why sometimes when you see the class clown that gets on your nerves, sometimes he'll come in the next day and he'll be sad. And like, of course, like, you don't care. Well, that's what you think. You think you don't care because he's annoying. He's a class clown. And he's not a funny clown, probably. But you still find that part in your body that actually cares. Which shows, which really does show that bullies don't wait. I forgot it. Hold on. Oh. Oh, okay, sorry. I forgot the... I forgot the owl for a second. But, um... But yeah, it's just like... You find yourself that you still do care... And that probably means that they're not a completely bad person. Unless they, like, actually beat you up. But, you know what? Like, if they made fun of you for your outfit, like, who cares? You know what? At least, at least you do your laundry. Well, at least I hope so. But, you know, it's just like, oh. I was trying to skip the song. <laughs> but, um. But, yeah, it's just, class, class clowns get on our nerves, but they usually do a lot of stuff because they are hurt, because they're sad, because they're mad, and sometimes it just happens. People just naturally take things, when you are so angry, and you have to bottle it up because maybe your environment at home isn't good enough to be open enough to be to feel like you are yourself I don't mind that it's just like sometimes it just happens like think about a time think about a time when you were really angry right you were furious because I don't know your mom took away your phone right so you have to go into school the next day without your phone and you start being a little B word to everyone because you got your phone taken away. 
you start you you reply to people like i don't normally short answers you just sound mean you sound like you don't want to be bothered and and yeah like of course you're going to take out your anger on someone else because you bottle it up you've bottled it up am i saying that right bottled it because you bottled it up for so long for a long period of time and it just happens it's a normal thing and you might hurt people in the process but that's where apologizing comes comes in you know you have to you have to learn how to apologize if you say something hurtful that you normally wouldn't say then you apologize for it you know you tell them oh i'm sorry that i said those words i didn't mean it i really didn't i was just so caught in the moment you know something like that it's something stupid like that you know it's just like like small gestures again this brings us back to our other the other topic i was talking about small gestures small gestures can affect friendships relationships romantic relationships um I don't know just just gonna affect your relationship with people you know hmm. if you if you um apologize to someone they'll realize that and they'll be like oh they actually care or oh they actually remembered that they hurt my feelings you know and it's like little things like that can change someone's mindset and of course you would think the same too if someone else apologized for you even if or apologized to you even if what they did wasn't that big of a deal like let's say they i don't know they called you a name and you know you guys call each other names all the time but that name it was, it was a hurtful name right something like that if they apologize to you you'll realize that oh they actually remembered how they how they made me feel without me having to bring it up first, you know? And that also takes strength. Not only to accept the apology, but to also, um, to also make an apology. You know, like, let's say, let's say you were the friend that called one of your friends, um, called one of your friends a bad name. Oh, I, I forget it all the time but yeah like let's say you were the friend that called um your other friend a bad name and you realize that it hurt their feelings so although apologizing in person is kind of awkward it's always the best move that's also oh my gosh sorry i'm talking so much i just need to take a deep breath hold on But yeah, um, it's going to be really awkward just because, you know, admitting that you're wrong is kind of awkward sometimes. Um, even though that sounds kind of self-centered of me to say, it feels awkward to admit that you're wrong. Because a lot of people that argue for them being right, usually they don't believe that they don't believe another point is right besides their own so that's why it's kind of awkward because you want to make sure that your apology is good but you also don't want to you don't want to make it feel that you don't mean the apology when you actually do because if you honestly if you fake an if you're gonna fake an apology just don't apologize at all like if you if you really aren't sorry for what you did or for what you said or what you wrote, what you, I don't know, what you texted, I don't know, what you called about. If you really don't mean sorry, just don't say sorry at all. Because you can either make the situation worse, or you can make the person feel bad about themselves. Or not bad about themselves, just like feel sad, you know. Just because no one likes a fake, apo no one likes a fake apology. Like what if someone says something really hurtful to you? 
and they apologized, right? And when they apologized, they didn't really acknowledge anything else besides saying sorry and that they hurt your feelings. Okay, that was, oh, that was the best off. But, of course, you'd be like, wow, you couldn't even apologize, right? You know, wow, you couldn't even apologize the right way. You know? And of course, it's going to make you angry. So, now you have to, now you have to imagine yourself making an apology. And it's like, Apologies actually do need some thinking sometimes because you want to make sure that you get all your points across. You want to make sure that you you want to make sure that you understand what the damage you did. Depending on how sm depending if it was small or minor, whatever, it you still did something that clearly hurt the person's feelings. So you have to make sure that you mention all of those things that you did just because it'll feel more genuine, you know? Because if you remember, if you remember what you hurt the person um, by, then th they'll notice that too. They'll be like, oh wow, they actually remembered what they hurt my feelings about, you know? And that's how the, that's how the apology becomes more genuine. And when you apologize, it might even strengthen your friendship, you know? It might, it, it might, or it could, or worse, it could, um, it could ruin a friendship. <laughs> but that's usually if you apologize the wrong way. But sometimes, some people just don't want to accept pol apologies. Maybe what you did was that bad, or maybe they're just in a bad mindset right now. Or maybe you just apologize really bad. Or they just don't feel like taking an apology from you maybe because they don't like you that much but that's just how people are you have to accept you have to accept that not everyone's going to like you and that not a lot of people are going to accept your apologies no matter ooh, no matter how hard you try it's just it's just never gonna happen you know no matter how hard you try to be a likable person, you can try very hard, but not everyone is going to like you. You could be the nicest person in the entire world and still people won't like you. And it's just... But yeah, it's just like... Not a lot of people are going... Oh, I'm messing up so much. I just... I'm sorry for these solves slowly getting worse. I might cut some of these out. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, it's just, people are not going to like you sometimes. And that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It might just mean that the person just simply doesn't like something that you did or something that you did to one of their friends or just, I don't know. They just might not like you. And that's not, that's, that doesn't mean that you have to change yourself. Just to be friends with everyone because just keeping those few people close it it's a lot more genuine than knowing every single person in the school or knowing every single person you see in the hallway you know popularity and attention does not mean anything just because it's it's all fake if you have to, if you realize that you have to change your personality to be friends with certain people, don't be friends with them. Because they don't know how you actually are. They don't really know who you are. They just know this fake identity that you go by. But if you compare that to the friendship with maybe your best friend from elementary school. If you compare that to the friendship with her, you realize that you can be, you can feel that you can be more yourself around around said friend right and now that's that's a good friendship that you should keep that's a good friendship that you should that you should keep close you know because they'll be with you to the end 
Unless you have an argument or something like that, but whatever. If we're thinking on the bright side. They'll be friends with you forever and ever until you both die. But, um... You also have to accept sometimes... Sometimes people grow out, uh, uh grow, grow apart, is what I meant to say, actually. A lot of people just get tired of others, or they just simply feel like they don't work anymore, or they don't have energy to keep up anymore, they don't see each other at all. I accidentally hit the space bar. They don't see each other, you know, it's just like... A lot of things can ruin a friendship, or a relationship, or family matters because of small things, and because of small things, or simply just things that are not out of your con are are out of your control. You know. Oh my God! I didn't mean to do that. <sighs> because oh, now I have to do this all. Hold on. Because it's just a lot of people are going through things in their life too. They're going through just as many things as you are. No matter how special you think you are. It's just it just happens, man. And um Try to say anymore. I'm like slowly falling asleep right now. But um But yeah, it's just people grow apart. People get tired of each other, people get busy, people move away. You know it's just how it is. Sorry, I'm being kind of quiet just because my throat kind of hurts now. I'm talking too much. But, yeah. I'll just leave it at this. I'll, I'll end it off on that. People grow apart. Um, care less. Don't let little things hold you back from doing big things but um yeah i don't know how this went from rubik's cubes to um life lessons but genuinely it's you just need to understand if you can understand if you can understand and learn these concepts and actually use them in your life you'll definitely realize how much how much like not happy i want to say happier but how much like more open that you can feel in situations in social situations um specifically but yeah um that was fun i think i might leave most of this raw just because I was doing something to entertain you um, while talking about boring things. But, um. I really hope that you could hear me over the Rubik's Cube. I was trying not to. I was trying not to talk loud. I, I was trying not to play my. Oh! I almost just face revealed myself. I'm trying not to. I was trying not to, um. What am I saying? Oh, I'll try not to turn too loud. I was gonna switch to this cube, but um, it's honestly louder. I feel it's higher pitch. I feel like it's kind of more annoying to listen to, but it does sound really nice if you turn smoothly. But also, it's kind of blinding because 
the yellows um because it's a stickerless cube so the yellow like reflects but this one the yellow still does reflect but it's the black lines that fix the lighting and also this is my main cube um it also has a nice it has a very a very um a very deep sound when you turn it like here i'm, I'm gonna put it up to my mic And then if you compare that to the stickerless cube, I just have my mic by accident. But yeah, um, it's yeah, it's whatever. I'm just gonna stop talking. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, podcast unknown. Um. I'm very glad that I am choosing to be active on YouTube again since the summer is coming. I'm getting, I can start making music again. Um, I can work on, I can work on Project TSNR, which actually, never mind. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil anything. I'm not gonna leak anything. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully, I can, hopefully I can actually get people on this podcast. Because there's some people that I actually want to get on here. Obviously not going to be, like, fucking, like, it's not going to be, like, Anthony Padilla or, or, like, freaking Markiplier. I wish, but I'm not that big. But I do want, I want some of my cousins and some of my online friends maybe or some of my in-person friends too i don't know but um yeah if you guys oh my god if you guys have anyone specific that you want on here just let me know and i reach out just kidding that is one way to get blocked and also sued no, i'm kidding i don't know how that works okay i'm gonna stop prolonging this i'm done whatever uh, i'm done yeah bye Um, this is actually a rock song, but I turned it into an acoustic, um, cover, but this is Bon Voyage by Dreamcatcher, so, if you know it, you know it. Honestly, probably kind of sucked because um, my fingertips really hurt because I was learning that song earlier. But um, I can do something that people might actually know, which I probably will actually put in the video. Get more intense. Oops. Yeah, or for 
all my K-pop fans here, you might know this one. Or for all my TXT fans specifically. Mm -hmm. 